so in this session we will going to talk uh, we are going to talk about some monitoring activities and uh, some metrics uh, to manage uh, and uh, to track so we are uh, very glad to be here uh, as a part of this amazing uh, organization and uh, i'll be talking uh, in the session with my uh, colleague Eylül. and uh, firstly let me introduce myself uh, as you already know, my name is Misut, and I'm working as a, a QA engineer in Siemens uh, Istanbul office right now. And uh, I'm a QA engineer for uh, more than uh, 12 years right now. And uh, mostly I'm dealing with uh, the automation of end-to-end -end test cases. But of course, uh, we have some experiences on the uh, application of uh, monitoring activities and uh, management of some uh, different metrics in uh, different areas. So uh, today uh, we want to share our experiences uh, with my colleague Eylül, as I told. And Eylül. Hi everyone, it's Eylül Akar from Turkey, Istanbul as well. Uh, I'm working for Siemens now more than three, three years now. And as Mesut told, we are working in the same team and we are responsible for uh, test automation operations in our team. And today in this session for the next 25 minutes, we are going to talk about monitoring metrics in our software products. So in this purpose, we will first, as introductory information, we will first talk about some necessities and very important benefits of monitoring metrics. And then we will go over in some more detail. Uh, we'll talk about how to select metrics and how to customize them. And we will talk about how to categorize them. And then finally, we will give some brief, a couple of examples examples of monitoring metrics about these are about how we applied uh, some solutions in our products and then finally we will wrap up and close the session and now Mesut we will we'll start yeah, uh, let's start with, uh, first of all, the necessity of these monitoring activities. Uh, I mean, uh, why uh, should we use metrics or should we really uh, use metrics or should we, should we really uh, involved in the uh, issue, uh, involved in uh, this part of the uh, process? Uh, because normally we uh, develop some products or we test some products. Uh, we have all uh, some daily tasks. Uh, we have all some uh, daily routines uh, individually. So at the first glance, it doesn't seem uh, as a part of the this daily routine, the uh, monitoring stuff. But we can uh, actually adapt these uh, monitoring activities as our daily uh, routines. Uh, or maybe we are already doing this, uh, even if we are not aware of it. Uh, I mean, I can illustrate this issue with a real life scenario. It is uh, similar to traveling from uh, somewhere to another. For example, when you uh, decide to derive from some point to another one uh, with your car, with your vehicle, what you do, you uh, complete some preparations, right? Before you are uh, right. Uh, you supply some uh, fuel or you check your oil in the tank, uh, you check your air pressure on your wheels and uh, you check inter uh, internal temperature and everything. You uh, be sure th that you uh, can start your journey and you uh, start to drive. And after some point, after a while, uh, after you get some way, then what you do, you normally check the metrics, right? You check if everything is going well or not. Uh, this is why on the cars there are some displays, there are some monitoring uh, screens uh, on the on which uh, you can see how everything is going. Uh, for example, if you do not check uh, or if you check never uh, the fuel level on the tank, you can immediately find yourself in an uh, unexpected situation. I mean, you can immediately run out of fuel because you never checked it before in advance and you did not uh, take some action items. For example, if you had uh, checked it, it and if you already saw that uh, the uh, fuel is going down, uh, you saw that uh, the number is going down, uh, is decreasing already, then what you do, you understand that, uh, okay, I should uh, provide some oil, right? You uh, take an action item that uh, you should provide some oil in the next station. So uh, this is like, uh, it's a very similar uh, illustration uh, for this real life scenario. Uh, I mean, we can uh, take this into consideration from two different perspectives. On the one hand, uh, you can uh, evaluate the current situation. On the other hand, you can make a future projection. I mean, uh, at, a, some, uh, at some point, uh, at some moment, you can uh, evaluate the current situation. For example, you can check how uh, the oil consumption was uh, up to that moment. For example, if it was uh, in the uh, expected range, 
or uh, if there was something wrong, if you saw that uh, the consumption is over than the uh, expected ranges, then you can understand something is wrong and you uh, can understand that you should check something. Or uh, you can make some future projections. For example, if you see that you uh, took already 200 kilometers with the half of the tank, then you can estimate that you can go another two kilometers, uh, 200 kilometers, right, with the rest of the fuel. It's just a linear projection. So uh, it enables you to make some uh, future assumptions and future estimations. So in this way, we can uh, find uh, lots of answers to our questions. Uh, for example, I will not go uh, over all of them, but at least uh, again, from these two perspectives, these uh, two different aspects, uh, we can get some answers uh, to our questions. For example, at uh, some point, uh, at a moment, we can understand uh, how bad are our uh, are our bugs. For example, if they are, uh, they have a, a certain distribution. If they have all uh, high severity levels, or if they have a sparse distribution in uh, different severity levels, we can understand the current situation. And uh, on the other hand, uh, again similar to the real life scenario, we can make some future uh, assumptions. For example, will testing be done on time? Uh, again, with the uh, like the uh, fuel in the tank, we can uh, again estimate the rest uh, of the effort. For example, if we uh, consumed, for example, two days for the half of the uh, set of test cases to be executed, then we can understand that we need another two days, right? For the rest, it is just a, a linear assumption. So uh, we can uh, get lots of answers to our questions. But uh, still, we are not done. Still, there are something that uh, further we can do, and that is to analyze what is going on and to take some uh, action items. For example, uh, like uh, I, said, uh, I said in the example, if you see that uh, some numbers are already going uh, lower, or if you see that already some numbers are going higher uh, than the expected values, then you can uh, or you must do something to normalize them. You uh, should be wise enough to understand what's going on in the field and uh, you should take some action items accordingly. And additionally, uh, they can be regarded as evidences to our claims. For example, in some uh, situations we are reporting our situation or we are reporting our progress uh, about uh, the uh, process to our managers. So uh, regardless of uh, how trustable people we are, the numbers can be regarded as evidences to our claims. In addition to our words, uh, we can uh, provide some uh, numbers and provide some metrics which represents our uh, progress uh, as an evidence. And Elul, this part. Uh, yeah, Mesut has talked about some necessities and the importance of uh, monitoring metrics. And now we will gonna talk about uh, how to customize and how to select the quality metrics a little bit briefly. And yeah, first of all, the optimization of metrics. Optimization means how to select and uh, how to start applying them, actually. So here in this list, I'm not going to go over them, I'll go over all of them. Uh, you're seeing lots of types of metrics. And uh, actually, in the literature, if you try to find out, you can see that there may be hundreds of types of quality metrics that you can monitor. But actually, the idea here is that uh, we must be able to select, we must be wise enough to select the ones that are going to serve our goal in the best possible way so we have we need to have some goals and for this purpose we need to select the metrics that are going to be useful for those goals so for example we are going to collect some data and collect and analyze these data later on and first of all before doing the actual job we just need to decide what do i need what data do i need to collect and do i need to watch in order to uh, accomplish this goal so after selecting our goals, the next job is to, before doing the actual job, uh, actually, uh, we should just uh, take a moment and we should just check that and ask ourselves that, okay, did I choose, did we choose the right metrics to analyze, right? So in order to do this, there is a very easy way to do this, actually. After selecting our, our metrics, before doing the actual job, I mean, we have our, we have, we all have our daily jobs and this collecting and visual uh, analyzing these 
metrics are going to take a lot of time. So we need to be sure that what we are going to do is going to be useful, is going to be efficient, right? So first thing to do is to set our metrics as one side and our goals another side and just check the compare these two to each other. They need to be relevant to each other and they need to be consistent. For example, one data type I chosen, I have chosen must be useful to view that data later on, right? So there needs to be correlation and mainly consistency before uh, between our goals and the metrics we chose, I can say. So after being sure about the metrics we chosen, we have chosen, uh, this, st this step, uh, the customization step comes. What does this mean? Actually, I mean, uh, in the previous slides, you saw uh, many, many types of uh, metrics in the list, but actually these are not just uh, like they look in that list, right? So uh, what I mean is, by this is that you can customize any metrics and any tools in order to collect this data in order to serve your goal in the best possible way. For example, what do I mean by this is here you see a screen from our project in Jira. This is a test case designs status updates. Uh, status update flow in Jira. So what we did here was this. Uh, normally by default, I guess Jira has just four or five, three or four types of statuses in test cases. Test cases, But we needed to, after some while, we needed to analyze what we did, for example, how uh, long the automation step has taken or in a test case, how, uh, how much time did we spend in design and design status or how much did we, did we lose time in code review status, for example. We decided at the beginning, right at the beginning, that we will need this data from later on. So we decided to set these uh, statuses in Jira and we have added these custom values and then, uh, which we are gonna talk about later, using Jira's APIs, we just fetched all the data and we had the chance to analyze them. And you can use your tools, of course, like this. Uh, they can be anything in order to, uh, in or, uh, according to the data you need later on. So, uh, okay, here you see another example of customization data. Uh, just briefly at the left side, you are seeing again a data the test case uh, record from Jira. Again, this, as a, this is a data that we had uh, fetched from Jira using Jira's API. So what I want to emphasize is that you see a custom field on the left side, right? So that custom field is uh, different from the previous slide that we showed you. It was the status field. Status field was, field was already there. And in the value of status field, we had added very uh, many types of values. But in here, we just needed a custom uh, field. And like this, we had tens of other custom, uh, custom fields, actually. So we decided that we had needed, we will need some additional data later in this test case designs. So we, had, we have added to uh, these fields to uh, test case designs in X-Ray, actually. X-Ray is a plugin, uh, test management plugin, which Jira uses, and we use that plugin. And at the right side, uh, additionally, I'm sorry, can we change the slide? Uh, yeah, and this is a view from GitLab API, by the way, and it shows us uh, uh, the history of uh, one of our branches, actually. This is a data we needed uh, later again. I mean, if you need something like this, you can access this data as well. So here you see, for example, we needed uh, how much time did we spend on uh, code reviews and uh, branch merges. So in, uh, just one time, we fetched all of the data for once, and then we could analyze uh, by comparing all of these merged at and created eight fields, for example. If we tried to do that by manually, it would take very long time, but using APIs, that was very, very practical for us. Uh, okay, so we have already discussed uh, uh, starting. Uh, we have already discussed uh, the management of metrics uh, by starting with some best practices. Uh, the first two uh, rule of thumbs are uh, the uh, customization and optimization of the metrics. For example, we have a bunch of metrics in front of us uh, to manage, and we cannot cover all of them. So the first thing that we can do is to select best uh, set which can represent our goals, and the second one is uh, to customize our tools or platforms uh, to uh, make everything visible. Uh, for example, in the last example that uh, Elu shared, uh, 
uh, we saw that we have added some uh, additional uh, fields, custom fields to the issues on Jira. For example, we added the uh, average execution time because normally we were concentrated heavily on the average execution of each test cases. So uh, just for the sake of uh, transparency, uh, we added those fields and we were able to, uh, from uh, time, uh, that time, we were able to measure all uh, the average times uh, for each test case. So uh, the third uh, best practice is uh, categorization of the metrics. Uh, because e even if we uh, select the best set, uh, if we uh, already optimize them and we uh, customize our tools, still it can be uh, hard enough uh, to manage them. Uh, so uh, another thing that we can do is uh, to construct some categories to manage them. So we can uh, take into account different metrics in uh, different categories. And the first category that I want to share is uh, the time aspect. Uh, for example, uh, sometimes we are really uh, very concentrated on uh, the metrics related to time or duration issues. For example, as I uh, just uh, give an example, uh, sometimes we are uh, concentrated on the average uh, execution durations or sometimes just before the shipment to the production environments. Sometimes we are uh, concentrated on the total execution duration. So uh, we can go over lots of uh, different metrics related to the time uh, aspect or duration aspects and uh, we can uh, select too many different metrics as well, uh, such as uh, mean time to failure or mean time between failure and we can uh, select uh, too many different uh, metrics related to time and uh, manage and uh, track them. And the second category which we can uh, track is uh, the category of the cost uh, metrics. Uh, for example, uh, of course, it is very important and there's a huge rivalry in the software market today and everyone is trying to be the first in the market and everyone is trying to produce the best uh, product uh, with the lowest uh, cost. So everyone is uh, trying to reduce the costs so we can uh, track them and uh, in this way we can manage them. Uh, we can uh, monitor the progress on the costs uh, if we are ahead of the budget or if we are uh, in front of the budget, uh, we can uh, monitor our uh, position as well. Uh, and uh, those metrics can be related to the costs which are uh, consumed on the human resources or uh, also the cost uh, consumed on the tools or licenses uh, that we use in our project. Uh, and the third category is uh, the quality metrics. And uh, at this point, I should say that uh, it is not very straightforward as the uh, previous two. Because normally, if you want to measure uh, some time metrics or duration metrics, you can just check your watch, right? And you can uh, calculate the time uh, difference between two activities. It is that easy. And if you want to uh, measure the cost that you spent, just check your wallet and uh, you can see how much money you spent already. It is uh, not very difficult. But for quality, I cannot say the same. Uh, there is not such a platform that you can immediately see the quality numbers. There is no such a platform. So it is not that uh, trivial and it is not straightforward as the uh, previous two. But still, uh, there are some approaches then you, uh, that uh, you can measure the uh, quality metrics. For example, for the usability uh, case, you can uh, perform some surveys with your end customers or uh, end users. So you can get feedback from them. And uh, for the uh, performance values, for example, you can measure the response times over uh, your UI pages. And you can uh, perform lots of uh, performance metrics, uh, but still I can say that uh, it is uh, a little more difficult than uh, the others. And uh, of course, the uh, interface of your product, which is uh, related to the customers or end users, uh, can be regarded as the outer interface of the product. But there is another interface, which is the inner interface. Uh, for example, when we, perf uh, when we are performing a white box testing approaches, uh, we know that it is mostly related to the code itself, not the uh, functionality of the product, right? So uh, we can uh, take this uh, issue uh, into account from this perspective. And uh, these inner quality metrics are mostly related to the uh, code metrics. For example, code complexity or code coverage can be measured in this way. And those are mostly related with the maintenance uh, tasks of the product. Because if we are not uh, taking seriously this uh, part, this uh, inner quality metrics, uh, then uh, in the later stages, we can uh, encounter some uh, maintenance efforts that uh, we had to uh, deal with. 
And the last category is uh, the efficiency category. And in this one, it, uh, it is a little uh, different than the others because normally they were uh, mostly uh, absolute numbers and absolute uh, measurements. But uh, for this one, it is mostly rather than absolute values, it is relative measurements. I mean, uh, instead of just measuring the time itself, only the duration, now this time we are uh, measuring the time per headcount, for example, or time per uh, some other metrics. So we are taking some metrics according to some others. So we are making some relative measurements and it is mostly representing our efficiency and it, it represents how efficient we are working. Uh, and we, again, we can measure uh, too many uh, metrics from too many different aspects of the product, but still uh, the best practice is to select the best one, which represents our goals and uh, which shows uh, what issues that we want to monitor and uh, uh, on which we want to see the progress and uh, go with uh, those selected metrics. And Mesut has told about uh, told uh, us about uh, some very uh, important categories of metrics, and I, I would just like to add one type of one categories of uh, metrics that are mostly ignored in many products. Uh, those are emotional metric metrics. So basically, if there are some problems, we could say if there are some problems in the team, and we keep ignoring this, basically we could lose very uh, important employees of us. So in order to prevent this, what can we do? Uh, in addition to all of those previous technical metrics that are uh, completely purely uh, about the product, we should uh, continuously check for uh, the ideas and the opinions and the feelings of our teammates or our employees also. Uh, this can be, for example, how they feel about the product, how they feel about the company or how they feel about the, their working environment. Are they satisfied with what they're doing or what can we do to, if they are not satisfied, Right. What can we do to improve this situation or the relationships between them? Right. So, uh, in order to do this, actually, there are some couple of ways. The the top two ones that come to my uh, actually, for example, this can be a face to face conversations. So uh, you can ask them directly some questions. Uh, and also you can ask them uh, some questions uh, via some uh, service, right? If you want to, to uh, keep the anonymity, if you want to have some anonymous responses. So in according to the results of these surveys or face-to-face -face conversations, whatever, you if they are not satisfied some with some things and if you can you can make some improvements and this way our, our employees are going to be happy also. And uh, yeah, just one little addition, a uh, little but very important, we can say there are some hazardous metrics also. Uh, the, by hazardous, we mean these. Uh, there are some strict, very strict numbers that look very important to us at first sight, and indeed they, they are very important. But there's just one point we just uh, um, we just shouldn't, we must not uh, ignore. We can say uh, we just uh, should not consider these uh, numbers all by themselves. There are we should know that there are many, many other parameters that are affecting this. For example, story points. Uh, at, at some point, at some sprints, uh, the team's story points can be uh, very low or at some other sprint, it can be very high, but there can be some environmental issues. There can be some issues related to products, etc. It just doesn't reflect the uh, motivation or the efficiency of the team uh, every time. Or the bug number, it can really change to uh, according to the stages of a pro product. So they are, of course, important. But uh, what we are uh, emphasizing is that we should uh, consider many, many other parameters while looking at these metrics in order to. Uh, evaluate them them correctly and yeah after talking all these uh, about all these definitions and we we can we would like to show you some very very brief, brief examples from our projects uh, some uh, solutions that we applied in our product uh, projects test framework project actually so the first one is uh, you see here a code block from uh, our 
what we are doing here in code block i'm not just go go uh, gonna go over each line of it but basically what we're doing here is using jira's apis in our test uh, test automation framework uh, as you see in the the first the second uh, line we are executing a, a jira query and we are looping in the results and what we are checking in this uh, code block is that the is the creation time of the uh, issues and the resolution resolution time of the issues so and we are comparing this uh, for the later use for example at this point of uh, the project i guess we had at least 600 or 700 issues and we couldn't just uh, analyze or check them one by one manually it would take very uh, too too much time and we couldn't do that uh, all the time i mean but we can we could do this continuously we just executed this code block and we saw that for example what we gained by this in some issues we realized that the resolution time was very long but in some issues they were uh, resolved in a very short uh, period of time so for example, one thing that we realized after analyzing the results that uh, some issues that had uh, low severity, uh, the developers were resolving these in a very long period of time. But the severity high issues, they were resolving them very fast, but actually, and this was not a situation that we wanted, for example, and we took some uh, action items to fix this. We uh, just uh, talked to developers or test owners and we did uh, some uh, improvements to actually change this uh, process i mean we uh, i can say that this we improve this process just by looking at this data and we checked many many types of data and you can uh, customize it this according to the data you need from jira for example and also we use cloudwatch service of amazon what what this is that basically it's uh, it can help you store data on amazon basically we didn't use uh, the data we all fetch from Jira or other uh, places etc we needed some uh, very safe place to uh, store this data and actually we didn't want to use our servers we needed some extra other uh, softwares in order to control that data so we use Amazon's CloudWatch and it's a very very practical uh, tool we, you can store any types of data you want and you can access the data uh, at any time you want later on and after CloudWatch, this tool, uh, I can say that this really helped us. And gra this is Grafana. They, it, it, uh, as you see, you can use many, many types of uh, graphics. And the graphics are showing you the type of data you want to show there. According to the data you uploaded there, uh, these graphics are continuously showing you data. And just this is an interface, just one type of interface, I can say. There are many, many other types of interfaces. And what we did here, for example, uh, uh, um, just at the beginning, two or three people uh, who were involved in this uh, Grafana process were just viewing this data. But after some time, we needed, uh, we wanted that this data to be seen by every team member. So what we did was, uh, for example, the that TV that is behind Mesut, we used those uh, big TV screens in our office to uh, reflect. Uh, this, this data and this way all the data was uh, seen by all of our uh, teammates of course um, before coronavirus <laughs> yes that's it yeah thanks Eilul. and uh, last but not least uh, this was the uh, outline main outline of uh, the talk because uh, we are about to run out of the time but for uh, the last minute i want to uh, make a uh, just a quick reminder of what we discussed in this session so uh, we thought that uh, there are lots of metrics and we can uh, monitor and track but uh, the main points are uh, to manage them in the best way so uh, th there are some uh, rule of thumbs to do that uh, there are some uh, best practices which can ease our work in this point uh, which are uh, the select the best one uh, instead of trying to cover all of them this is the optimization of the uh, metrics and the second one is the customization of the tools we could, for example you can add some additional fields to the uh, apis or uh, the fields of uh, the platform so you can uh, monitor them additionally and uh, you can manage uh, the metrics in different categories and uh, instead of uh, going with uh, the uh, individual uh, metrics in standalone uh, formats you you can combine them together to uh, go with uh, some uh, metrics which represents the efficiency in the work and finally we told that uh, you should be interpreting these numbers because numbers are great numbers are telling something to us 
but we should be wise enough to understand what they are talking to us and we should uh, be wise enough to uh, analyze what's going on in the field and we should uh, take some action items accordingly so this was uh, the general uh, main idea of this talk and uh, i want to thank uh, to everyone who listened to us in this session and i think uh, we are running out of time uh, but i see a few questions on the chat but uh, even if we close the session i will uh, we will try to uh, answer them in the chat uh, so and we uh, already uh, shared our contact information so please do not hesitate to reach out to us and thanks again for uh, listening to us and stay safe thank you so much okay i'll uh, we are out of time but i will switch to the uh, chat part and uh, we can write the answers thank you again bye thank you